Hello and welcome to Tienery. I am going to be doing another video regarding my Tienery.biz website revamp today. Um, I've gone ahead and done quite a lot of stuff in the meantime in between the this video and the last. Um, mainly because I just wanted to get ahead and make sure that what I was going to do was actually going to work properly because um, as you might imagine um, if you're following the hex community i've been on the hex community and i've asked around how do i get the php target to work in the way that i want it to do um and eventually i got there in the end uh what we've got here is this news page oh well we had a news page hang on a minute so we click on here and for some reason it's not working i'm not entirely sure why uh but this is always the way isn't it you know something is working then you start recording and then it suddenly stops working for some reason don't know why it just does um you may have um you probably haven't seen this before uh it's four coder um, I've started using it because I actually prefer it over using Code Studio. I do use Code Studio for debugging, um, primarily using Car, but uh, for Coder, I just feel so much more productive in this um, editor. Uh, that's obviously my opinion. Uh, but I think first things first, let's go ahead and fix whatever the problem is here. Um, so, cannot read property, has child. Nodes. What? What are we? Where's the call stack? Clear node. No. Populate nav choices. UL. So we're getting a clear node children here. Right, that, that's a simple fix. Um, and then we're going into populate page. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> I think I see the reason why that is. So, we'll just go ahead and fix that just quickly. So, let's go into JS Web Utils. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Clear no children. That's here. So basically, if we are equal to null, just return like that. <clears throat> that should fix the issue that we had. Refresh. There we go. Okay. So what we do is we click on it and it, and we get these um results now when i click on it it's not really doing anything at the moment because i've changed a few things around with this uh, since my last video um, what i've done is i've got this uh, thing here uh, which is a database i've got a few things in here i haven't got any news items obviously but i've got some categories here generally general books and video games right so those are the categories and we're displaying it in alphabetical order so if we go and take a look at the code of what's going on there so what we've got here is we're requesting data so in our web utils which is over here right we've got this function call which is request data so we're using ajax to uh, call data um, we're sending some data over to uh, index.php. So we're saying, okay, what is the kind of data that we're looking to acquire here? So we tell the PHP target, this is the data that I want. So if we go back to our main, if we go down here, I've got this sort of uh, router thing, the same way that w we've done in the uh, JavaScript target where we check to see what page it is and then we do whatever we need to do with regards to that page right so I'm connecting to a database 
Uh, obviously as local host, there's no password being used there and we're connecting to Tianary base there. Um, we set that connection to a manager which is uh, part of this import up here. So system .d or sys.db.manager. And then what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I am getting this uh, page. I'm setting this page uh, value to news, right? And I'm sending it along with um, the data request to that uh, PHP uh, context. So when we take a look at that page, what we're going to see is news, right? Now I've got two classes. I've got one which is called uh, news, um, which we're not going to be using yet. We're just going to check with the category to start with. Um, we've got this news category uh, class as well, and each one of these has a manager, which is uh, part of this, right? So we've got our news category, which extends sys.db.object. Manager is part of the object class, so we don't have to instantiate anything, unless, of course, we wanted to manage our own uh, data manager, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go into that. Um, and then we've got a few uh, variables. Now, if you're going to do this yourself, what you need to be careful of is naming. Because if we take a look back here, what we've got is our news underscore category. Now, this needs to be exactly the same name as it is in here. Because if you don't uh, put the class name to be exactly the same as it is in the database, then when um, Hakes does its sort of reflection thing or whatever it does in the background, right? It probably, gen I think it generates macros actually, to be more precise. But um, if you don't do that, it's going to th it's going to throw an error. It's not going to be able to find the uh, table. So you need to be careful of that. What you can do is you can use the uh, table macro and you can actually specify, okay, I want to take a look at this um, table here. So I could uh, rename that to news category without the underscore. And I can say news category here, right? And I can rename that like that, right? And I can do this and then I can build it and it will type not found news category. Oh, because I need to rename the file, that's why. Um, how do I do that in? I can't remember how you do it in a four coder. You know what? I'm going to have to go in here and adjust it here. Hopefully that won't break anything. <laughs> um, so we can just reopen that and that'll be fine, right? Uh, so we'll build that. Um, I get a bunch of warnings because it's saying, oh, this class is going to be removed soon. Please install blah, 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 blah. All right. But I don't really mind about that too much. I think that's probably going to be removed in Hex 4. I'm not 100% sure about that. I'd have to take a look at take a look into it. But um, if that is going to be the case, then obviously we would have to revert to using uh, tables. Uh, sorry, that library. So we take a look at that table. We didn't have any errors, and it will work the same way as it did before, right? We refresh works just fine right so <clears throat> that's just an example of how we can connect to a database using the spod which is this spod macros here so you can get a lot of information on this web page it's part of the old hakes archives it's very useful um, to get started with managing all of your database stuff and connecting it onto the PHP target. So it's all well and good, I think. I think this is a good starting point for <coughs> for actually building a PHP target website. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to go back into JS and I'm going to expand on what we've got. So we've got we've got um, our populate page right 
so in here what I've managed to do is I've said okay we request the data once we've done that I want to populate the page which is this do all this and then we call back now <coughs> excuse me the reason I do that is because if I go back into main um, what I had previously was in our switch page function we had our news.display we would call it all of this and then afterwards we had this page is equal to going to page but that doesn't quite work out because because this is asynchronous by the time um, that has been called all of the rest of the code in here is going to have been executed including this page is equal to going to page so by the time we make this comparison we're not going to animate and it's just going to appear immediately so we don't want that to happen so what I've done is I've made this workaround right it's I mean everything in JavaScript is basically work around work around work around work around because it forces you to use anonymous um, uh, functions and callbacks which I think is terrible terrible programming design but you kind of have to live with it if you're going to work with JavaScript um, I think we just we should just get rid of JavaScript entirely and just uh, develop our own uh, version of the web which actually makes more sense than this but what can you do um, but anyway so we have this uh, news.display we're still calling that right we're passing in our URL and we pass in that callback which is page switch complete that's going to then say page is equal to go into page um, I should probably do it in oops I should probably do it here just to make sure that this bit actually works right otherwise it it's not going to um, function properly so we build that we refresh that's still working this is refreshing right we click this is all good so let's now go ahead and expand on this so down here what I've got I've left most of this intact I've got quite a lot going on in here as you can see um, we've got our category uh, we're taking a look at our categories right and the way that I'm doing this is I've got this request data I'm getting back the value we pass in the value here we get our result and at the moment all I've got is um, I'm basically setting the first the first line that we get back in that result um, and splitting it up by semicolons if we go back in here what I'm doing is I'm saying okay for each category inside of categories I want to print the name of that category followed by a semicolon. That's all I'm doing. So we go on to, so if we wanted to expand on this, we're going to have to do a bit more work. The first thing I'm going to do, we're going to keep it like this. We're going to say, okay, the first line is definitely going to be categories. We're not going to change anything about that. Next thing I want to do is I want to actually um get some news stuff on here in order to test it right now there's one of two ways in which we can do this i can go back into um my previous website i can get a backup of the json files and just merge it all into um here in the not this one but this one uh, merge it into here so that we get everything so that I can get everything all set up in here alternatively I can just do what I had before with uh, this right so this is what I'm going to do just for the time being I think what I'll do is off off screen or off recording should I say is just say let's just have excuse me uh, different I'll just have um, 
<clears throat> what was I going to say? I can't remember what I was going to say. Yeah. Off screen, what I'll do is I'll have different... I'll make my own application very quickly just to merge all of that data. I won't do it as a re as an actual recording. Um, it's quite simple to do, really. It's just a case of... Um, doing what we did in Hakes, right, with this, for example, this news category, right, and then <clears throat> and then making a console application, maybe a Nico or C++, it doesn't really matter, um, connecting to that database again and then just uh, going through the JSON files and adding it onto the database it will be very very simple very easy especially with type defs which is probably what i'll do uh, but for now we're gonna just do some tests with re with regards to this so i'll keep it like that for now make it like that let's uh, duplicate the row we'll make that category two and we'll duplicate that again that'll be category three right Okay. Now I'm curious. Oh, because I duplicated it. <laughs> let's just say. Actually, let's make it more obvious what it is 15, 12, something like that. Doesn't really matter. 16 to 8 <laughs> doesn't matter but um, basically we've got some news items and that's what we want to get so let's go ahead now go back into here I want to get all of those news items well not quite if we say in here we've got our page is equal to news right um, what we want to do is we want to pass in um, certain values. So whatever our news.url, we're passing in our URL, right? We're going to have things like um, our category index and URL and our year and stuff like that. So we kind of want to have all of this um, back here so that we can... modify it in place so i'll bring that up here so our year what i'll say is here with a string so i'll make that a variable there i will do the same for the category which is here I'll bring that up here as well so that'll be our categories right that'll be a string Oops. and then let's see then we'll have our months as well right so we put all that down here so we don't have to do it again and all of this stuff will of course be um, available immediately so what I'm going to do here is say if category not equal to empty right then we will do all this might actually want to do that so that might be a good idea and then we'll do the same here as well if year it's not equal to empty paste that in there All right so what we now have is 
we can now start saying um, what our what we're going to resolve that as. So we'll, what I'll do is I'll have a uh, parameters value here. Inside of category, what I'll say is uh, params is equal to uh, ampersand category is equal to, and then whatever our category name is, right? In here, I'm going to say params is equal to and here oops. we're going to pass in our year and if month is not equal to empty then we'll say params is equal I shouldn't say equals but I should say plus equals it might be a good idea that'll be fine like that so here I'll say and month is equal to and then month like that. Now I think what I'll do is say month dot sub str zero three because I want to get the first three characters, not um, the entire string. And then I'll say two lowercase as well. Okay. So we've got our parameters, and then what we want to do is here pass in our params. So inside of our main function up in the other pane here inside of PHP, we will get um, our other values right so let's say we've got our category right well we want all of the categories there but we if we've if we've selected a category then what we want to do is say if use category dot manager uh, dot search right We'll pass in our true here, and in fact, no. What I'll do is I can use this dollar sign to get the name that we want to use. So that name is going to be equal to uh, what we pass in, right? So if we say param category, we say is equal to uh, web and fax. For our params, we'll do that. Params there. So I'll pass in params, and what I want to do is I want to get the category value. If that is set, if we, if we don't get back null, because it'll come back as null if it can't find it. So if it isn't null, then we want to do all of this, right? So we'll pass in param category here, right? We're going to get that category name. If the category name is found. Then we want to get uh, whatever the ID of that is, so that we can determine what uh, news uh, items to display. Right. So we'll say var news is equal to <coughs> excuse me is equal to news dot manager dot search. So in here, what I'll do is say ID is equal to uh, whatever our category ID is. Right. No, sorry. What am I doing? Category is equal to category.id. 
I believe. Let's just double check that, just to be sure. Let's see here. So yeah, we can use the dollar sign to determine what we are um, searching for, right? And we can uh, do these things, right? So that's all good. So let's go back here. We'll build that to see if that's okay. Oh. Need to import that. New category has no field ID. What are you talking about? Oh. There should only be one of them. Ray access is not allowed on. Ah. <laughs> uh. I love lists. Great thing indeed. No. <clears throat> Instead what I'm going to do is say for character and category. Got it original, so I'm gonna to have to do the same as before. Which is really annoying. Thank you for that, Hoax. Um but anyway. So we'll pass in cat ID. Right. There should only be one of them. I only get back one of them. Um, actually, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Where is our list? Oh, we're already in there. <laughs> right, okay then. Um, so, as soon as the first element of this list, or null if no elements exist. Right. So I can just use that then. I'll just use that. So we'll go back to what we had before. Dot first. Right. Category dot first ID. Right. So that's all good. So we're going to get back these news items now what I'd like to do is parse it in a specific way and the way that I'd like to parse it it's not by using um, <clears throat> JSON because that'll be a bit slow and what we want to do is we want to make this website as performant and as fast as possible right so JSON can't really use that so I'm gonna stop here for the time being I'm not and I'm going to go into the next video and we're going to take a look at how we're going to deal with um, parsing and working around our own data structure. So I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial just for the time being until we go into the next video, uh, get our um, data structure complete as well as, of, as well as actually displaying the news items in that specific manner. So thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.